Hello and welcome to another video on standard form and in this video we're going to be converting from standard form into ordinary numbers but this time we've got negative powers. So I'm going to go through a few examples and then I'm going to give you some to have a go at as always. So with this first example we've got 7 times 10 to the power negative 4. So we can see our base number is 7 so I'm going to write that down straight away. Now because we're multiplying by 10 to a negative power that's essentially the same as dividing by 10, so we're going to be dividing by 10 four times. So we know there's going to be some zeros involved, and the zeros are going to be in front of our 7 because we are dividing by 10. So I'm going to write some zeros here. Okay, let's just write a few, and, and now we can think about where our decimal point is going to be. So we know that our decimal point is start, starting at 7, so it's going to be after the 7. And now we're going to be dividing by 10 four times. So all I'm going to do is move my decimal place to the left four times. So one, two, three, four. So now my decimal point is here. So you can see our number. We don't need these extra twos at the beginning. I can just rub these off. Okay. So you can see our number, our answer is 0 0.0007. Here's another example, 3.05 times 10 to the power negative 2. So our base is 3.05, so let's write that down, 3.05. And we know we're going to have some zeros in front of our number, so let's just write a few in. And now we are dividing by 10 two times. So you can see our decimal point is here at the moment, 3.05. And we're going to move our decimal point to the left two times. So just 1, 2... So now our decimal point is here. So let's just get rid of some stuff. So let's get rid of these first two zeros. And we can also get rid of this decimal point here. And actually, I think what I'm going to do is just rewrite the answer because it looks a bit messy. So we've got 0 0.0305. So this would be our answer. Let's go through one more example. 4.4803 times 10 to the negative 6. So we can see our base number. I'm going to write that down. I always do exactly the same. Let's put some zeros in front of that 4. I don't know how many we need. It looks like we'll need quite a few because we've got a power of negative 6. So hopefully that's enough. Now we're going to move our decimal point, which starts here. We're going to move that backwards 6 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now it's here. And we again, we can get rid of these first two zeros so i'm just going to write out the answer again so this is equal to 0 0.00000 0. i think i've got the right number of zeros 44803 and again just to reinforce the idea that the reason why we're moving our decimal point to the left is because we are dividing by 10 so although it, it, we've got a multiplication symbol here because we've got the negative power, we are dividing by 10. If this was a positive power, then we're multiplying by 10 and we would, move it, we would be moving the decimal point to the right. But because it's a negative power, we move the decimal point to the left. Okay, so here's some questions for you to have a go at. So pause the video and see if you can write all 10 of these numbers that are written in standard form as ordinary numbers. Okay, I'm assuming you've paused the video, so let's go through this now. So the first one, 2 times 10 to the negative 3. So if we write down our base number and write some zeros in front of it. Now at the moment our decimal point is in front of the 2. And we are going to be dividing by 10 three times. So we're going to move the decimal point 1, 2, 3 places to the left. So this is going to be equal to 0 0.002. We don't need this uh, first zero. Question 2, 7 times 10 to the negative 2, so our base is 7, and let's include some zeros. At the moment the decimal point is in front of the 7, and we're moving it to the left 2 times. So 1, 2, so now our decimal point is here, so you can see our answer is going to be 0 0.07. Question 3 is 3 times 10 to the negative 7. So this time we've got quite a large power, or I should say a really small power because it's negative. So our base number is 3, and we're going to have to have quite a lot of zeros in front of our 3, because it's going to be really small, our number. So let's put our decimal point in, and we're going to go to the left 7 times. 1, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I was almost right with the number of zeros. So our answer is 0 0.000, 1, 2, 3, and then we've got another 3, 1, 2, 3, and then we've got our 3. Now at this stage, let's just pause and see if we can spot a pattern between the index number and the number of zeros we've got after our decimal point. So in the first example we went through, the index was negative 3, and you can see there's two zeros after our decimal point. In this example, the power was negative 2, and there's only one zero after our decimal point. And in this example, the power was negative 7, and there were six zeros after our decimal point. So it looks like there's always one less zero after our decimal point compared to the power. And the reason for that is because if you think about it, where our decimal point starts, it's before our base number. So we have to get past that base number first, and then go the extra digits to make up to the number. So if you think about it, with this example here, our index is negative 7. We have to go one space first to get past our 3, and then another 6 spaces, and that gets to the negative 7. So if we look at the next example, you can see our power is negative 3, so I would expect there to be two zeros after our decimal point. So let's just write, write what we think the answer is going to be. So it should be 0 point and then two zeros, 1, 2, and then our base number, so 6, 7. So let's just sort of prove that this works. So if we're going in the opposite direction to get back to our base of 6.7, then we're going to go to the right this time three times. So 1, 2, 3, and that does take us back to 6.7. So it did work. Let's keep going. Question 5, 9.9 .9 times 10 to the power negative 5. So with this one, I would expect there to be four zeros after our decimal point. So it's going to be 0 point, and then 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, and then 9, 9. Question 6, 5.43 times 10 to the power negative 1. So this time, if we take 1 away from 1, we'd just be left with 0. So there's going to be no zeros after our decimal point. So it's just going to be 0 point and then 5, 4, 3. And hopefully you can see that because all we're doing is moving our decimal point one place to the left. So it's going to be directly in front of our 5. Question 7, 1.01 .01 times 10 to the power negative 8. So this one's going to be 0 and then we're going to have 7 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and then just 101 at the end. Question 8, 4.229 times 10 to the power negative 5. So this one's going to be 0, point, and then we're going to have four zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we're just going to write down our base number, 4, 2, 2, 9. Question 9, 7.866 times 10 to the negative 2. So this is going to be 0, point, and then we're only going to have one zero, zero, and then 7866. 7, 8, 6, 6. And last but not least, question 10, 3.0003 times 10 to the negative 3. So this one's going to be 0 point, and then we're going to have two zeros, and then it's going to be 3, and then we've got three zeros, 1, 2, 3, and then we've got another 3. So hopefully these practice questions were useful for you. And hopefully, after watching these four videos, you're now comfortable with writing numbers in standard form and also converting from standard form into ordinary numbers. So in the next video, we're going to move this on slightly and we're going to start looking at doing calculations in standard form. So that will involve multiplication and division. So thanks again for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Take care.